Namaskar and a very pleasant good afternoon to all of you. I, Sangeeta Kaur, on behalf of DelNet Developing Library Network, extends a very warm greetings to each one of you on this chilly, cold afternoon from New Delhi. It's a profound privilege for us to have you with us today at a very important webinar, which is on NEP 2020, Redefining Libraries and LIS Education, which is very shortly going to get delivered by Professor Jadeep Sharma, a professor in Faculty of Library and Information Science, School of Social Sciences at IGNO New Delhi. It's a profound privilege, firstly, to welcome uh, our distinguished speaker of this afternoon, Professor Jadeep Sharmaji. Jadeep Ji, on behalf of the entire uh, Delnet family and also the entire LIS fraternity, let me convey our very sincere warm thanks to you for making it possible for us to have you with us and to hear uh, from your expert uh, uh, you know, preliminary talk. No, so thank you very good much. Good you and all that. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. I think it's a, indeed a profound pleasure. I also extend a very hearty welcome to all of uh, each one of you, the distinguished uh, library and information science professionals who have joined us from various parts of the country and even from outside India. Our, uh, I also extend a welcome to a large number of our students who have joined us from various departments of library and information sciences. It's a pleasure for Delnet uh, to have organized uh, this particular webinar, which is on a topic which holds a great significance for those who are involved with the libraries and also those who are being with the library departments of library and information science. I'm much pleased to share with you that Delnet, this is the last webinar of the year 2021. As we say, as we do a send off to the year 2021, through this webinar, this is the last concluding webinar uh, which is being organized by Delnet uh, in this year of 2021. I'm much pleased to share with you all that Delnet has organized around 74 webinars uh, throughout the year from 1st January 2021. And this is the 75th webinar that we are holding in this year, and we really look forward to organizing many more in the coming new year. It's a pleasure now for me uh, to introduce you all, a person of great uh, uh, contributions, you know, who is well known in the field of library and information science. We are talking of no one else other than our distinguished speaker of this uh, afternoon, Professor Jadeep Sharmaji, who is a well known figure in the field of library and information science, who has tremendously been contributed to the and has been contributing immensely uh, to the library and information science with his profound contributions. He's quite a well-known name in the fraternity and ha has been making the profound contributions uh, for more than around four decades. Professor Shoma joined Kurshetra University as a lecturer in 1989 and worked there till 2003. Prior to it, he also worked in a college library to name Vivekananda College in Delhi University and also on a project of ILA in IGMCA. Uh, Professor Sharma joined as a reader in Indira Gandhi National Open University in 2003 and he's currently professor at the Faculty of Library and Information Science in IGNO. He has been coordinating different programs and taught in face-to-face -face mode and as well as now in the online mode. He regularly teaches in the online programs of IGNO through TV and radio and is also involved in the course curriculum designs. Professor Sharma holds PhD in professional competencies and LIS education. Professor Jadeep Sharmaji has been associated in professional activities associated with professional peer review journals, acting as reviewer, edited special issues of well-known journals like Annals of Library and Information Studies and Desitalk Journal of Library and Information Technology. Also, he's joint editor of well-known peer-reviewed journals, including Library Herald. He's a life member of prominent professional national associations, including ILA, ISLIC, and DLA. He has been regularly delivering lectures and refreshes programs across various universities and research institutions, Navadhyay Vidyale, and other schools. He's also involved as a convener in designing standards for Bureau of Indian Standards and has been a member of Board of Studies of different universities. Professor Sharma has been associated in design, designing curriculums of different different universities. He has also acted as a co-guide 
for PhD students in other universities and has regularly been evaluating PhD thesis of different universities. It's a profound privilege for us to have you with us, Professor Sharma, and uh, it's, it's, it's indeed an honor for us, and thank you so very much. And also let me take this opportunity to thank you for providing your splendid support to Telnet. Professor Sharma also served on the Research Advisory Committee of Telnet over the years. So it's a profound privilege for me now to welcome the, the special guest, or uh, the invited guest, of today's webinar, uh, Professor Jadeep Sharmaji, who is now going to speak on NEP 2020, Redefining Libraries and LIS Education. May I have a pleasure of requesting you, Professor Sharma, to kindly start this afternoon's special. It's okay. Thank you, Dr. Sangeeta. A very good afternoon to all of you. My sincere thanks to uh, Delnet, Dr. Sangeeta, and all others who are responsible for making this seminar possible. And Special thanks to all of you to have to have been here uh, out of your busy schedules, otherwise busy in your organizations, and particularly maybe some of you may be vacationing towards the end of the year and finding time to be here. I'm really thankful to all of you. The topic today is a very interesting topic, and why I chose to speak on this topic is that we are in the midst of really implementing what we are supposed to implement when we talk of national education policy. And from the point of view of reforming our libraries, preparing ourselves to really work for, uh, while we are working in the libraries for the implementation of national education policy in the country, we see here uh, in all universities, people are working, they are planning for implementing national education policy and very busily doing it across different disciplines. I am part of it in my own university, Indira Gandhi National Open University. I have been in touch with my professional colleagues in all other universities, right from one corner of the country to the other part. And I have been getting inputs from all my colleagues that they are all in the midst of really planning and implementing the recommendations of national education policy in their departments. I talk to my friends working in libraries and I find they too are very eager to prepare themselves to implementing national education policy. At times there is a feeling that there is not much mention of libraries in the policy, but you know that when you talk of implementing educational reforms or changes in education, it cannot happen without changes in libraries. So it's all it's all understood, it's all uh, implemented when libraries really play their role. So maybe that there is not much mention explicitly, but it's all implicit This libraries have to play their part if this policy has to be implemented, which is going to be implemented very fast since we see how fast and how at a very hectic pace we are all working. Some of the universities have got certain approvals also. Some are in the process of getting approvals. Some are planning and some are at a very advanced stage of implementing national education policy. The, we all know that Karnataka state is one of the first states to have implemented national education policy. And I find library information science departments in the state, they are at one of the most advanced stages in implementing the policy in library information science departments. Maybe I, I maybe uh, I am short of knowledge that even uh, the libraries have some plans. They have got together and planned something for their state. Because I would like to inform you all that uh, the faculties of all departments in the state they have come together. They have planned it. They have got it approved also, and very soon they may be implementing and the things will start working in the state. Central University of Haryana, when I was in a seminar there, I was told that they have already implemented national education policy. While talking to my friends in other university, I find that they have been doing it. They have, they are at it and very soon it will be done. Libraries are also in uh, preparing themselves, gearing up themselves to implement the policy. So uh, I think before the new year starts, I thought it's very right time to have a discussion because when things have to be done anew, we need to discuss, we need to ponder over, we need to think of the issues, we need to think of how to implement things, our views, uh, our opinions, 
getting together, sitting at one place, one seminar is not enough, one discussion is not enough. As we have seen in academic circles for the past one and a half year, there have been a number of discussions, number of seminars, number of webinars at different levels, different sets of people coming together, putting their minds together and working towards implementing this policy. I believe that we allies professionals also need to really come together and talk on these issues threadbare so that whatever we finally come to agree on and implement, it has to be something which is the best possible. So that is why I thought it is uh, really important to discuss this. I, I will share with you my slides. I hope the slides are yeah, 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 Jaitik, it's very much visible. Just kind yeah. of put it in the uh, slideshow, in the slideshow. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so as I was telling you that it is almost one and a half years, exactly one and a half years since this policy was announced. It was announced on July 29, 2020. So you can very well imagine the type of reforms that are expected, the way it has been uh, planned and the way it has been announced that we really need to work hard because for the last one and a half years when it was announced, right from that day itself, there have been discussions at different levels and we all know at what stage we are. So that means it is something which is a quite a change that is to happen and therefore we need to really work and do a very uh, basic groundwork before we implement it. I start with the fundamental principles that have been given in this policy. I have made, made use of the policy documents that have been given and I suppose you all have access to these documents. If you do not have, I will provide you a link to that. So using that policy document itself, I have given my thoughts to it which I will be discussing with you all. So it has been uh, the, the policy document discusses the fundamental principles that are the fundamental principles of national education policy. To begin with, it says that it uh, the policy says that we need to have holistic development of the student. This is very important because when we want to prepare our student to face the professional challenges, the to contribute to the society, holistic development of the student is very important. Every student should be allowed to recognize, identify the capabilities of the student and we should be able to help foster those unique capabilities of the student. It uh, stresses on foundational literacy and numeracy. And I believe when you talk of foundation literacy and numeracy, starting at the school level of education, if you would like to add to it as allies professionals, I would add here the information literacy also. Though we, when we talk of foundation literacy and numeracy, I believe information literacy has assumed an importance of that level that we can include it here. Flexibility is the buzzword in this policy. We all have seen, we all have gathered by discussions around that flexibility has been stressed at each and every point. The rigidities have been improved. The barriers have been improved, have been overcome in this policy. They say you allow the students to choose their own learning trajectories and programs according to their talents and interests. We all know that no one of us are alike. Every two individuals in this society, every two individuals in a classroom, every two students in a classroom, they are different. So let the students choose their learning trajectories and programs. Therefore, this is what is flexibility and we all see, yes, this is what we are talking today. So let there be no clear, uh, let there be no rigidities, let there be no silos between different areas of learning. The way we say uh, the arts and science sh should come together. It is not that I say I'm not a student of science, I don't know science. No, the, a person doing arts should also have uh, combinations wherein he learns science. 
a person doing maths may also be doing dance and music. So don't have those barriers, don't have those rigidities and rigid lines separating different curricula. This is the basic philosophy, the fundamental principle. Not only the disciplines, it says, let there be no rigidities between curricular and extracurricular. Let it also be integrated with, with, between each other and vocational and academic. I, I believe that we have been going through this dilemma of vocational and academic in our discipline. And right now, we got a clue here that let the academic and vocational be also integrated. Let there also be a choice for the students and think about these two together. Uh, continuing with the fundamental principles, multidisciplinarity and interdisciplinarity. These are also have been talked of in this policy and that, that's why they say it's a fundamental principle. So when you talk of holistic education, don't limit the student to one discipline. Let the student learn different disciplines and have a holistic development. And that is why they say a person doing science may be doing arts also, a person doing Arts may also be in science and, and music and fine arts, and therefore to ensure integrity, unity and integrity of all knowledge, every part and division of knowledge, every part of knowledge helps the other part of knowledge, and therefore we say, let us learn this knowledge in unity and integrity. You know, there has been a feeling in our society that we learn for our exams, we mug up, we uh, we, while we appear for the exam, we just unroll it out and finally we forget it. So they say, no, that's not the way to learning. It has to be an emphasis on conceptual understanding rather than rote learning. So it's our learning is not only for exams. Our learning is not only to secure marks. We have to understand it. We have to develop a conceptual understanding and show our conceptual understanding when we are examined. It is not merely on the day of examination. Any day when we want to show our understanding, we should be able to show it. And for that, while we learn, we have to show creativity and critical thinking. That has to be encouraged. That is what, you know, when you talk of all these things, it is more important for the teachers. The pedagogical aspects have to be taken care of. When you want to see that your students develop a conceptual understanding, you are able to uh, inculcate this creativity and critical thinking among the students. So as teachers, it's very important. And the teachers of teachers, the librarians also have to develop and help the learners to develop these skills and attitudes and, and competencies. Uh, they, again, ethics, human and constitutional values, empathy, respect for others, courtesy, democratic spirit, spirit of service, which is very important for our profession, and scientific temper is very important. And therefore, this also, as teachers, we have to keep in mind. Another very important thing is multilingualism. We all know that all those of us who are uh, not good in the uh, other languages, we are com comfortable with our own uh, regional languages. We at times feel that we are left behind. Therefore, they say, yes, we have to stress on multilingualism. We have to provide our classes, our teaching in different languages, in all the languages, in all the regional languages. And they say that because there is a stress on equity, they want everyone should learn. No one should suffer and not suffer with language. Therefore, they, this also is very important. We have to keep in mind this. Life skills because we at times feel that what we have learned, it is only limited to the books. We are not able to really implement that. Therefore, uh, to, for survival, communication is very important. And for people like us who are in the service sector, as students, we have to develop these life skills. And these have been really uh, part of the fundamental principles. Now, when we are talking of assessing our learners, Assessing them towards the end does not really suffice. It has to be regular formative assessment. And we are not very new to that because nowadays we have, in fact, for the last so many decades, even when I was a student in my university, there used to be a formative assessment. 
but then that formative assessment should not be just limited to one formality at a particular stage this has to be regular it has to be regular formative assessment in different ways it has to be in different ways and different kinds and for all this use of technology is important because technology enables us to uh, to have an outreach of our activities to have access to provide access and therefore whether we are teaching or we are learning we this helps us is helps us in removing language barriers also we are talking of multilingualism technology will come to our help so this barrier can be in, overcome by this increasing access for the young students because a large cross section of our students may be suffering due to the fact that the learning and teaching is not taking place in a medium which is accessible to them so that is for library inclusion science professionals for practicing librarians this is something which we have to mind that we have to make provision for all different kinds of the young students for all different kinds of materials that has that i think we need to take a clue from here when we see the fundamental principles that we need to overcome this we need to make our library strong in this particular area therefore this whether it is all these or it is planning uh, or managing our educational system we have to make use of technology as i was mentioning you about equitable access equity and for all therefore they say respect for diversity and local context in all curriculum pedagogy and public policy equity and inclusion all students are able to thrive in the education system whether a person is from a urban background or a rural background from a different linguistic backgrounds from different countries from different cultures they should have they should have the facility we should have provision for them for learning for effective learning therefore these days when we are talking of our educational system it is not merely for our own region it is not merely for our own country we are going global these days i am uh, as part of my university our teaching learning is global particularly when these days we are doing it online it is global therefore we have to take care of inclusion and equity uh, not only from the point of view of our own country but also across the country also synergy in curriculum across all levels in education again i would say that for our profession and our discipline this is very important because at times it is felt that at different levels that synergy is not there and for that we need to plan our curriculum in a way so that a student at different levels is able to get uh, goes uh, rises above from one level to other level and for that we have to uh, see that the curriculum has that quality they say the teachers are are the heart of learning therefore recruitment is very important and if we do a status survey i think though so off late situation has improved but then that is a weak point in our educational system and uh, it should improve working conditions should improve environment also has to be conducive for effective teaching and learning and more importantly continuous professional development though we are having refresher courses refresher programs but the way we are planning for the change i think cpd will be very important we have to prepare ourselves who will do this how will it be done so that we should be able to take care of what we are planning we are able to really implement it the way we have to do so there has to be a provision not only in learning the new developments in our discipline but also learning how to make others learn so there have to be two specific different aspects while we talk of cbd regulatory is very important and we all know that there are regulators and the there is a mention in the policy about this phrase is there in the policy which i have taken exactly a light but tight regulatory framework so it allows you the flexibility but at the same time we are accountable therefore there has to be audit we need to be transparent and they say 
encouraging innovation and out of the box ideas though autonomy is there but at the same time there has to be uh, accountability also therefore good governance empowerment and therefore the, the, this uh, we'll talk about it a little later outstanding research when we talk of teaching learning and we talk of literature yeah, i think we talk of a discipline growing the research is very important and that's what they have stressed on they say research not only at the level of after your own uh, masters in the at the level of mphil phd and beyond that even before that they say bring it as a component at the level of graduation under graduation so the the component of research has really received the attention and we need to think about this because when we talk of innovation we talk of thinking we talk of creativity it starts from the very first stage and therefore research has to be a component inculcated in our educational system continuous review of research by educational experts so when we are doing research it has to be reviewed so as to make it a sustainable system and this is another thing as a fundamental principle they say rootedness and pride in india therefore uh, it's rich diverse ancient and modern culture and knowledge system and tradition that has to be a part of our curricula that it should not be lost in our traditional literature we have to learn from it we have to take it further we have to see how we can for the research on that therefore that is also there and maybe that there is a reason for that that to avoid brain drain that is very significant a very uh, negative aspect which, which is there though that i think that may be also the reason for including it here quality education for all. so that is also very important which has always been important so about the vision they say develop good thoughtful and well rounded creative individuals so we'll talk about each of these things um, how to do that allow students to study one or more specialized areas of interest at a deep level so not limiting when we talk of specialization it should not be just one it should be one or more and at a deep level develop character ethical and constitutional values because as a, it's important for one and all but when we talk of the service sector in which we are it is more important for people like us for a profession like us for any professional i think intellectual curiosity scientific temper creativity and you know for all this our teachers have to be very consciously seeing that in our students we are able to develop this and librarians have to work together with teachers to see that our young generation who comes forward they have these characteristics of i repeat again intellectual curiosity scientific temper creativity spirit of service which will with time develop also once you are in the profession but then to begin with while we are students i think this has to be inculcated and 21st century skills across a range of disciplines so the way knowledge is moving ahead we have to see that it is a part of our curriculum and for that we have to work really hard quality higher education it says this includes personal accomplishment and enlightenment constructive enlightenment constructive public engagement and productive contribution to the society our students it is generally feel they lack direction they they are just doing it for the sake of doing it so they say you prepare students with a sense of direction meaningful and satisfying lives and work roles and economic independence is something very important so we should be able to relate ourselves with our work roles relate our learning and teaching with work roles this is very important and this should give us this satisfaction and the last word is very important the economic independence that means a, a professional program like ours this should give us economic independence not only economic independence from the uh, way of thinking it that we uh, earn out of it in a job but also maybe we seek our own living out of it maybe we are involved in entrepreneurship infopreneurship now 
it also talks about the problems because this is how we are envisioning this is how we are planning these are our objectives these are the principles but what where is it like where are we standing now what are the problems what are the shortcomings they say it's a severely fragmented higher education system uh, the, the integration is not there there are boundaries we are working islands so it says and the continuity is not there the integration is not there so this is how they define it as severely fragmented the higher education system less emphasis on development of cognitive skills and learning outcomes and it is i think as a consequence of that that we have the lofcf now so but then you at times i feel that what they say here as development of cognitive skills it may be cognitive skills uh, only or application of those cognitive skills at times while we are serving in the uh, serving sector we forget the cognitive skills but then this is a drawback which they say that there is a less emphasis on cognitive skills a rigid separation of disciplines that what i have mentioned earlier also when well, this may also be a reason for severely fragmented higher education system that the disciplines are like islands with early separation of students into narrow areas of study and we are not able to correlate we are not able to see there or contextualize we are not able to really see the meaningfulness of one discipline with other limited access in socio economic disadvantaged areas with few higher education institutions to teach in local languages and a consequence of that nowadays we are seeing that it has begun in some of the premier institutes that they have started teaching in local languages also and there are concerns and there are uh, efforts from different quarters in my own university also there uh, these all these things have begun and very soon we'll see how uh, we are uh, really working on that limit teacher and institutional autonomy lesser emphasis on research this is there we really lack on research even at the level of universities and that is why our outputs are so visible at in different quarters ineffective regulatory system and therefore they have come out with a structure of regulatory system also so when you talk of multidisciplinary you know whenever we talk in academic circles this is something we keep on talking again and again multidisciplinary education and how to do it how different disciplines have to come together this is an exercise in itself and when we talk of library inclusion science we also need to identify all these disciplines which we have to include while we talk of education here so they say develop all capacities of human beings and that is why some of the premier institutions some of the institutions that have been recently set up in the country institutes of higher education we see they are different they they have all such combinations of multidisciplinary education and their uh, students are really doing better off so it has to be holistic multidisciplinary it is not just having different disciplines they have to be integrated and holistic and some of the examples they say that when you talk of that the development from the point of view of intellectual aesthetic social physical emotional and moral in an integrated manner so not just putting them together but integrating so that the whole, uh, the development holistic development takes place from different angles and this is very important credit based course credit based courses we have already been um, almost all of us are, are have seen cvcs so credit based courses and that to choice based credit courses and projects in the they when they talk of projects in the areas of community engagement and service environmental education value based education they have really uh, stressed on that because we are seeing how the degradation in the environment is taking place how we while we are at the while we are in education and teaching we are forgetting the community engagement and therefore these have been stressed when we talk of education in the national education policy when you talk of research and innovation uh, you see across institutions 
this word innovation is really talked of and we have set up incubation centers in all institutions they also talk of technology development centers because you cannot do without technology therefore this is important centers in frontier areas of research so this is all a uh, futuristic approach and we have to keep working in this and particularly our professionals we have to come out with out of the box thinking while talking of such frontier areas of research keeping in view the needs of the society academy industry linkages uh, this is not very new we have all been hearing it and we are all trying to have this in our discipline also interdisciplinary research and um, cbcs to be revised to instill innovation and flexibility so we have just begun it for last you know, four three four years and they say it has to be revised and revising it to uh, keeping in view innovation and flexibility flexibility is there at every stage and innovation is very important they also talk of national research foundation so there is a stress on research there is a stress on innovation there is a stress on uh, the critical thinking skills there is a stress of analytical reasoning and therefore devising something new coming out with new thinking critically these are all part of the uh, national education policy when you talk of regulators they at the top they say the higher education commission of india will be there and under it there will be national higher education regulatory council it will be a single point regulator and under that there will be the national accreditation council which will do the accreditation higher education grants council responsible for the grants and general education council which will frame expected learning outcomes and graduate attributes and you know when you talk of the first three uh, these will be at the higher level but when you talk of the general education council it is concerning for us it is really concerning because they say that while formulating these uh, learning outcomes and graduate attributes the professional councils will act as professional standard setting bodies like in agriculture it may be indian council of agriculture research in medicine it will maybe indian medical uh, indian council of medical research so we have such councils similarly for law also it is there but for our profession what who will be that who will be the professional standard setting body so we have to think in terms of this because when we talk of accreditation i think this is a very opportune time for all of us to really act together come sit down think and uh, whether it is our professional associations like the, uh, the indian library association indian association of special libraries and inclusion centers or it is the uh, indian eaclis indian association for teachers of library and inclusion science professionals uh, teachers of library and inclusion science all of us need to put our heads together and think of either creating a body out of it or uh, some uh, uh, formulating something so that uh, we having a representation of all different types of professionals and come out with standards so that we are able to frame expected learning outcomes graduate attributes and have a recognition that is very important recognition in the society is very important and also um, when you talk of a profession when you define a profession such a body is very important accreditation is important for any profession regarding evaluation as i was mentioning about the formative assessment and summative assessment they say it has to be criteria based assessing student achievement based on learning goals which has to be continuous and comprehensive it has already been visible nowadays we are all part of online teaching and learning on the swayam courses uh, i i we all here as part of the uh, teaching fraternity we have been really framing the evaluation seeing all different learning goals all different objectives cognitive skills or other skills we have to frame questions we have to provide a metadata and this is really yeah, already being implemented and will keep on improving with days to come 
I keep on talking to my uh, library uh, professionals and I uh, generally uh, hear from them that there is very little mention of library in national education policy. And uh, going through the policy word by word, I try to see how much mention, why there is less mention. And I uh, saw there that it began as library as a physical space. It has been observed in the national education policy that library as a physical space is not available in schools. So there is a mention. They find libraries important and it is being missed in schools. And they say every uh, ensure that every school has a library. So yes, they, they have stressed the importance of a library beginning from a school. And they say, uh, another mention of library as is public library, which is a weak link in our country. They say we should have ICT equipped public libraries. And they, while mentioning, they specifically mention for adult education courses. So, you know, they want to take all together. They want to see that everyone grows. So they say for adult education, public library is important community engagement because when you talk of learning from each other learning by talking learning by doing learning by discussing they say community engagement for that public library and enrichment activities so it has not to be just conscious conscious learning it has to be informal learning it is uh, therefore they say that this is very important while going through the national education policy and seeing how much mention of the library because when uh, uh, there is a feeling that it is not there. Uh, again, they say, improve the availability and accessibility of books. So there is a feeling, yes, it has, it is less. And especially for the differently abled, and I believe all my fellow friends would agree on that. Yes, for the differently abled, it is really something which is lacking. For the socially disadvantaged rural and remote areas. So this is a reflection of our, on our public library system and maybe in other institutes also this needs to be uh, worked upon. Mobile libraries, online and digital libraries, social book clubs. So see, the, uh, uh, by seeing all this, the mention of library here, it is felt that those who are missing it, those who are the disadvantaged, those who are really the have-nots, they say, yes, you have to provide them, whether you do it in the form of mobile libraries or online and digital libraries, because the stress on ICT is always there. The most important of the mention is towards the end when I see they say foster greater collaboration between educational institutions and libraries. So all those which I have discussed till now is no less important when you talk of the mention of library in national education policy. But I believe this is something which is very comprehensively mentioned in just a few, uh, in just a line or two that this, we have to interpret this, foster greater collaboration between educational institutions and libraries. So I think this covers all, this sums up all. When you say NEP implementation, and it says it cannot be done without libraries. So we have to work on, we have to prepare, we have to prepare a policy document, we have to plan it out and prepare this document wherein we are able to show, yes, this is how we collaborate with educational institutions and really see that, yes, this policy is implemented. So I was just thinking about how to foster this spirit of collaboration with educational institutions. And um, this is regarding implementing NEP. And, and you, if you think of beginning with the syllabus uh, or the teaching, when you're talking of seeing every student as a specific individual, different from others, mentoring is very important. Research has been stressed. Assessment has to be formative, regular formative, continuous professional development, and access to knowledge and information. You tell me, my dear friends, where in these points library has a less role? 
you're talking of syllabus there will be a major change in the syllabus we have to have the developments the we have to bring out new things and who will do it without the help of a library the library has to gear itself in this direction because new uh, new programs will be designed there there will be mergers there will be acquisitions there will be redesigning and we have to be on uh, our toes all the time to see how to acquire literature because you know the teacher cannot teach without all these uh, the, the, the food for thought has to be there who will do it the libraries have to do it so uh, how we can prepare a policy document on that a plan of action on that that how to feed about all these how these structural changes in the syllabus in the program how we will able to really cater for the syllabus for that they, these are days of oers these are days of open access and therefore we will be able to give them a feedback from all these and this shows our importance in the whole scheme of things in the system teaching you are talking of uh, implementing uh, nep and when you talk of teaching and mentoring let us take them together you are not talking only in the face to face mode you are talking of audio mode you are talking of online mode and the way things are expanding i when i am i am in this responsibility today i am doing all sorts of teaching i believe that if my friends are not helping me my library friends are not helping me i'll not be able to really do all that so i think whether it is teaching or it is mentoring uh, a library has a great role to play we have just to see how to change ourselves how to evolve ourselves how to unlearn relearn and do it in a different way and i think this is the right time where we have to Uh, take over and be more important than anyone else in the scheme of things and research is not impossible uh, without libraries library is a very important component of research and it is already visible the way uh, our researchers these days are learning the uh, how to overcome plagiarism how to do research in ethical way and how to avoid misconduct in research whether it is literature whether it is data whether it is the visuals or whether it is the creative commons they all learn from the library and you, it is you talk of research data services or research management and library has a role everywhere so this has been stated in this one line the collaboration between educational institutions and libraries assessment is also not possible without the help of libraries and continuing professional development the technology component will be taken care of by libraries and librarians who will do that whether it is training the teachers training the learners training training the students i think the since the library is one important component of this ict chain yeah i think he not only would provide the technology per se but also would provide the training for using it seeing that we are able to overcome the digital divide and access has to be there because when you are making all these changes and you are the whether it is the teacher or the learner he is dependent on literature whether it is a print form it is in the electrical electronic form it is a a a human or institutional information source i think no one knows it better than the library so i would say that library has been mentioned in national education policy it is implicit there and we have to see how to see that how to plan a document and come out with it and Uh, this is in support of what i was saying this is a recent uh, newspaper clipping again provided by one of my friends working in a library uh, a very recent thing wherein our chief justice honorable chief justice of india he has stressed the importance of libraries and i just reading out from what he says that uh, he says that uh, the books give more of a kick rather than a cup of coffee he says that book reading gave more kick than coffee and he he 
stresses the importance of importance of libraries and says yes libraries are as important as playgrounds which should be there in all educational institutions so i i assure my fellow friends yes they are the policy says that now uh, as far as educational uh, preparation preparedness preparedness for implementing national education policy is concerned we have already seen that ugc had constituted a committee and uh, it had given a locf for a bachelor's degree in library education science way back in 2019 and it set the tone for this i think this is the basis for what the national education policy says that it involves planning and yes uh, hurriedly i'll go through what it says uh, because it's a approach it's you know, it says learning uh, opportunities based curriculum framework and it helps to design and develop a curriculum deliver it and also review it so this is something very unique and you would see that the cbcs is really based on that in fact we did not have cbcs earlier when it was given for other disciplines loc has given locf has given cbcs for us and uh, the important um, characteristics of locf is that it talks of learning outcomes in the in terms of knowledge understanding skills attitudes and values and it says that when you talk of learning outcomes it is given in terms of graduate attributes qualification descriptors program learning outcomes and course learning outcomes so it goes from generic to specific so uh, talking of graduate attributes and coming to course learning outcomes it goes on more specific and given in very concrete terms and all of us in different departments and universities have really framed our curricula in terms of all these things so locf is really helpful for learners teachers employers also because you are able to see the outcomes whether it is outcomes in the form of graduate descriptors or it is in terms of program or it is in terms of courses helps us to stand, maintain standards also gives us a point of reference we are able to know where that student stands at a particular point of time what he can do what he is capable of what he knows and therefore this is something very important that it is also it enables flexibility and innovation whether you talk of designing and developing a syllabi teaching learning process or assessment so this is how it enumerates the graduate attributes which have been mentioned otherwise also that in terms of knowledge skills professional skills hard skills soft skills communication skills critical thinking skills which has been stressed in the nep also as we were talking of problem solving skills team working has also been mentioned here in the nep digital literacy ethical awareness lifelong learning skills so it's all there qualification descriptors are also there so these are all mentioned there and uh, you can go and see and you will find it's all there so just to Uh, enable you just to remind you yes it is already there they have mentioned the structure also and most of us have followed this in terms of structure in our departments core courses elective courses generic elective discipline specific elective ability enhancement compulsory courses and skill enhancement courses and they have also given a structure that four credit of four courses and elective courses and two credits for ability enhancement courses they have even given a broad structure though it is a little uh, uh, out of place seeing the way ict is making inroads in our discipline and they have also talked of internship now i will talk a little bit about the curriculum practices that are prevalent in different parts of the country i have surveyed i have tried to find out from my friends in different parts of the country and i find that there have been quite a, a lot of developments as far as curricula is concerned and what locf has do locf has given uh, as a technique as a structure it has given it has given us the guidelines but as far as the curriculum which is indicative that has been given i think our fellow friends in different departments have gone far beyond that they have revised like anything they have brought in new developments i would just present before you a few developments that are 
there. Like I was mentioning of Karnataka, where all the departments have come together and they have given a structure where in they have given different core courses and other courses also. To begin with, I just present before you one or two courses and I'll just give you the titles. Like they start with the first course, they're naming it as library systems and operations. And for that theory and practice four, four credits theory and two credits practice, wherein they have mentioned about uh, different names, uh, the different uh, the parts of this curricula, just indicative, they mention about library, museum and archive also a development. In fact, I think this is something which we have to really take care of, information and reference sources, functional units of a library, DDC theory and practice. Similarly, the next course, Basics of Library Management Theory and Practice, again, four and two credits. As they all core courses, they have mentioned of six credits. And they're talking of the DIKW, Data Inclusion Knowledge, Wisdom and Five Laws, Digital File Formats, Resource, resource Description and Access, including Practical. Then they have given different core courses. And I present before you the structure in just uh, by names we can all make out and, and not only the that i have also tried to do a content analysis of core courses across different universities and uh, i present before you here on the screen library systems and management automated library systems information processing tools and technologies knowledge organization processing and methods resource reception standards resource reception and content designation, theory practice, information retrieval, information representation and retrieval, digital libraries, theory and practice, marketing of information, bibliometrics, digital libraries, web and social media technologies, knowledge society also as a course, uh, you can see how uh, ahead we are going and how much work for us and how much we have to prepare for all this introduction to data science, advanced metadata creation practical, ontology is practical. We need to have infrastructure. We need to be well versed with the technology tools, designing information products and services, and study of knowledge organization systems, introduction to markup languages, content management, practical, all are very important. And you know, talking of internship duration uh, is something which we have to take care of uh, from one to three months frequency, whether after every semester or after every year, institutions to which to be attached, which we have to really find out. We, it has to be formulated. We have to really come out in concrete terms. It has to be a regular affair. It is not a one-time affair. Then only it will go on. Who will evaluate how the student learning during internship? And it has to be very objective. It is just not have to be on paper because uh, our students learn during internship. And therefore, we have to really, this is an issue which we have to talk of. Now about open electives, they, uh, open electives, we, these are meant for other disciplines and uh, ranging from library information centers to reference information sources, information resource management, electronic and documentary information resources, information literacy, digital information literacy, technical writing, discipline electives, um, not many library, uh, library schools are now offering these, uh, but still they, these are their public libraries, academic libraries, special libraries, and discipline electives, advanced mark and Dublin core, knowledge organization, preservation, conservation. Like that, there are uh, different discipline electives, users and user studies, information systems. These are all, uh, but then I read out some new which people have come out with discipline electives like citation databases, research metrics, content management systems, and, and uh, the health information system, business corporate information system, and uh, web content management, open access resources, scholarly communication, data visualization tools and techniques, social media and libraries. These are all prevalent. They are all offering these courses. So the, the, this is quite a, a new development that is taking place. Open knowledge systems, library service platform, data carpentry and libraries, virtual learning and libraries. So these are different types of uh, skill, uh, discipline specific electives and skill enhancement courses, multilingual information retrieval, which is really the need of our reference and citations, digital information literacies, 
uh, offered as an ability enhancement course and technically write technical writing also as a ability enhancement course so core courses for uh, six credits four to theory six to practical and similarly the discipline specific electives all four credits and at times three credits theory one credit practical or similar and similarly tutorials in some those where you don't have practicals and the ability enhancement courses for two credits one for theory one for practical or tutorial and more importantly i'm very happy to see that they have thought of streams stream a stream b and likewise they have recommended core courses so that people are able to develop themselves for different fields they they can they are helping students to choose out of those streams now there are issues like if the national education policy says if we talk of like education science at undergraduate level and they, they have proposed three years and four years and uh, if we also follow that. This is just one uh, proposition, whether we'll be able to do it or not. So if we offer uh, LIS at undergraduate level, it has to be either three years or four years. And naturally, if it is three years, if a student exits after first year, we have to give a certificate. After two years diploma, three years degree, and four years, it could be honors degree with four years or with research also. So we have to see they have made a mention of synergy. So if we talk of all this, this should be, uh, there has to be a synergy uh, because a person leaves after one year and joins after two years or from other university comes, there has to be a uniformity and really uh, the one should be benefited after doing it. It also should correspond, in, uh, correspond with the work requirements. That also is very important. Otherwise, there is no meaning in providing all these. And when you talk of all these courses, the, our earlier certificate and diploma would really not be matching with this because things are changing. This has to be kept in mind. Now, if we are offering three years graduation, then MLS will be a two-year program. Then we, how will we provide multiple entry and exit? Will we be doing it? Naturally, we have to do it because we there is mention of this multiple entry exit in national policy on education. Then if we are doing it, what will be the name of the degree? Because they say after one year, it has to be a postgraduate diploma. So if we offer a postgraduate diploma after one uh, year of MLIS, then what about the employers? Do they recognize that postgraduate diploma? Because still now it was called BLIS or belief science. So this also is an, is an issue which we have to take care of. If it is a four-year graduation, then MLS will be one year. So again, this has to be kept in mind. We are talking of so many new courses. This is really a challenge because, you know, if we are talking in a face-to-face -face education system and we compare it with the open distance learning system, we have to prepare those courses. We have to prepare self-learning instructional material. We have to prepare videos for also our online courses. We have to prepare 40 hours of video for one course, 20 hours of video, 40 videos. And these are so many new courses and it has to be multilingual. We have to prepare literature for that because there has to be something at the background. If we start just the course and not only for the students, for the teachers also, who we have to learn. There are so many new things coming up. So training is an important issue. We have to provide labs. And what about our old certificate diploma and specialized diplomas that we are offering? What about the recognition? So uh, these things have to be kept in mind. It is not just creating a syllabus. It has to be not only a syllabus, it has to be offered, it has to be seen that how do we really provide that syllabus and it has to be synergetic, it has to be multidisciplinary, it has to be interdisciplinary. Interdisciplinarity is already inbuilt in our programs and in our courses, but multidisciplinarity we have to think of because we are a, our, our discipline itself is interdisciplinary in nature, but talking of the multidisciplinarity which has been
really to think of how to bring in that multidisciplinarity because other disciplines are already working on that and they are talking from the point of view of their significance and use in the society this is something which we have to really talk about there are issues which uh, have been stressed in the national education policy it has to be local context inclusion is important diversity and equity so when we, i was talking of the type of curricula being offered you cannot talk of that curricula across the country therefore we have to think of local context how to modify how to have changes here and there how to have different type of curricula and at the same time standardized also have social acceptance and also movement from one university to the other so either we will have bridge courses or we have made, we have to make provision for such students who come from one university to other there are feelings of um, some fellow professionals who say that we will not take uh, students from that university and this university no that is not an approach which is has to be there at the level of the profession we have want to come and set and they think of ways and means so that the acceptability is there credit transfer is there flexibility is there a student can move from one university to the other university can have education from uh, at one place and other place also when it is available why the student is deprived but then if he or she has a education and training at one level he should be able to rise above and match the requirements at the other level also so then only we will take care of equity diversity local context as well as inclusion this is one of the examples that how we are moving ahead we are offering uh, a diploma uh, even at the for library automation and this is not one there are so many that are uh, be visible these days so we are moving but then i believe we need to really ponder on all these issues and think of how to really take advantage of the changing scenario prepare ourselves and see that our profession also gets a fillip is really talked of highly and we play our role expected in the society thank you i would be happy to answer questions and be happy to learn more from all of you know your views about things this will really help improve the situation and also help us to prepare and do well and come on a better pedestal to face the challenge thank you all thank you so very much professor sharma for such a very exhaustive uh, holistic uh, deliberations that you have made on national education policy there could not never have been anyone better than you to deliberate because you have the best of all the worlds as uh, the, you know, the great experience of being a librarian the great experience of being an educator at the same time in the library information science departments and you have been able to really uh, do so uh, well justice in this topic because not many of us have been known that what is in store for us as a library and information science professional uh, out of this NEP 2020, the most ambitious uh, document, uh, which is definitely going to transform the entire education scene in the country. Thank you so very much for sparing time, for being there, for sharing your words of wisdom with each one of us. And you have so wonderfully even have uh, also highlighted some of the best practices which are already uh, going on. Uh, and this entire paradigm shift in the uh, course curriculum which are happening and they are the best practices they are uh, the role models for many more uh, university departments uh, in our own profession and uh, it's really indeed so happy to see a lot large number of the topics that you have mentioned about that that's already has started getting now into the departments and our students are the one definitely who are getting you know benefited out of this and uh, moreover also towards the fake end that you have highlighted about the issues which are there and uh, uh, what you have been able to uh, uh, you know point out because after going through this entire document and which you are practically also definitely uh, you are also because you since you are the helm of affairs at the most prestigious distance learning university in the country and you are encountering that that how really to go hand in hand and uh, so thank you so much also for sharing uh, those views with us and there are a lot many takeaways for each and every professional who have been a part of this uh, wonderful webinar and also to start working on that even i would like to mention that we at delnet also are closely now uh, going through this and seeing that how we can do and uh, try to uh, do something in a phase wise manner 
You have also mentioned about uh, uh, having the uh, availability and accessibility of the documents for the visually impaired, you know, for people with the special needs. Uh, so libraries collectively have to come together to really do and a lot, lot many things which you have really been able to elaborate in such an uh, lucid manner. Indeed, much grateful to you, uh, Professor Sharma, and thank you so very much indeed. Now we would like to make the floor open for questions. Uh, as we have mentioned earlier, we have our invited speaker, Professor Sharma has got another meeting, so he is going to be there with us till four o'clock. So let's try to make the best use of his ability over here and the great experience that he has with him. Uh, I would just like to request our attendees, if you have any questions, you would definitely be having many questions. Please raise your digital hand. And firstly, I would like to go because uh, uh, this question was also being asked in the chat box by uh, Mr. Sri Ram. Uh, uh, from uh, 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 he is uh, he has a question uh, and I'm just uh, requesting him uh, firstly to ask the question to you and this is uh, the practical issues that uh, they are encountering. Mr. Shriram, I have unmuted you, uh, requesting you to please unmute yourself and you may kindly introduce yourself firstly and ask the question. We are connected, uh, Dr. Shriram. Please go ahead. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Sangeeta, and uh, thank you, Dr. Jaydeep, sir. Uh, it's really wonderful, wonderful to hear your uh, lecture, and it is indeed motivating for me because uh, at Sikkim University, uh, I'm a Sriram, a librarian at Sikkim University. So I have been given an additional responsibility to set up the Department of Library Science at uh, Sikkim University uh, because the state don't have any uh, LIS department by any other university. So it is big challenge for me to uh, in line our curriculum with NEP because a new uh, committee has been set up to uh, uh, work on the NEP also. So my uh, straightforward question to Dr. Jadip, I think partially I understood some of the uh, presentation where uh, he has given how uh, library science can go ahead with the implementing NEP. But my question remains unanswered where uh, generally we take a student at graduate level in library science department. But NAP says that we have to go uh, with uh, after 12th, the education system is going to be four years. So how you are going to see how library can go ahead with the implementing at existing level. And alternatively, one more question uh, I would like to ask is because in India, there is no uh, accreditation process of library science education like American Library Association or CELIP uh, uh, in UK. So uh, there is a lot of uh, problem. Uh, personally, I have also faced uh, in my early career. We are not eligible to apply for any higher education system or uh, job opportunity in international markets. So uh, uh, what do you suggest? What is your opinion about these two, these two questions? Thank you. See, uh, your first question, as I was mentioning you, that uh, uh, this is a question that came to our minds also because when you talk of NEP they have suggested this uh, four plus one year that means undergraduation four years uh, either it has to be honors or it has to be uh, research and finally one year graduation and if it is three years uh, it has to be two years and if a person passes out uh, uh, first year of your uh, post graduation the uh, uh, he will be entitled to be awarded a postgraduate diploma. So if we uh, naturally we have if we want to be in the scheme of things, one is that we uh, one option is that we offer a uh, library information science at undergraduate level also. So if we, if we offer at undergraduate level, it has to be either three years or it has to be four years. If it has to be three years, then we have to be masters for two years. If it has to be four years, it has to be masters for one year. But the issue is that if it is masters for one year, and they say if in a multiple exit in the first year, it will be the student will be awarded postgraduate diploma. So one problem is that it will no more a BLIS or BLIS, it will be postgraduate diploma. There will be issues of employment for our students. So we, we need to sit down with the employers and this change has to be brought to the notice of employers so that students do not face a problem. This is one issue. If it has to be uh, two, three years, then it will be a two-year MLS. 
but then also if it, uh, for multiple entry exit we may have to allow our students to leave after one year then how to make provisions for joining in the second year side line similarly alongside if a student comes from a other department there have to be differences in the departments and if you want to provide credit transfer we have to make provision for that all of us over the country we have to sit down and frame chalk out things so that the mobility of student is not affected the other major issue is as you rightly mentioned offering allies at the undergraduate level and we all know that we have been admitting students after graduation only because the, the we want people to have the expertise before they enter a academic expertise or level before they enter life education science there have been instances where people are offering life education science at undergraduate level also again my contact with fellow professionals across the country i came to know that people are offering just some general elective courses at the undergraduate level right now but there are preparations uh, in some areas where people are chalking out programs for graduation level uh, allies also so again then what will be the names of the degrees whether it will be dlis or it will be blis or it will be bba in lis or bcom i mean the name what sort of degree will be there but then how to really come out with such a syllabus because this person who has studied a particular academic discipline only up to class 12 then when we offer uh, library education science at undergraduate level we may have to offer <coughs> other academic courses also we have to provide education in other courses also so it will be library education science alongside the other courses so for that we need to really debate we need to need to talk about that so that we all do it uniformly across the country i hope i answered your question dr shira yeah thank you very much uh, professor sharma we have yet another attendee of ours who would like to ask a question and she is anand uh, mrs anandita uh, anandita sharma uh, anandita i have unmuted you requesting you to please unmute yourself introduce yourself and please ask a question anandita sharma could you please unmute yourself i have unmuted you from here Anandita Sharma, could you please unmute yourself? Uh, you have raised your digital hand. If you want to ask a question, please unmute yourself quickly. It seems that Anandita is not able to do that. I request you please post your question in the chat box, and we'll be more than happy to take the question and uh, get the answer from uh, our distinguished speaker. I'm uh, now would like to request. I'm going alphabetically with the names uh, of our attendees who may like to ask a question and have raised the digital hand. Uh, uh, please allow me some time as I'm trying to go through this listing. Uh, we have Dr. Pradeep Das, uh, who is interested to ask a question. Dr. Pradeep Das uh, from MIT. Uh, yes, Dr. Uh, Das, please introduce yourself to our uh, speaker, and you may ask your question. Dr. Pradeep Das, you are uh, connected right now. Please ask your question. It seems uh, he's not able to do that. Uh, let me just quickly move on to our next uh, attendee, Dr. Ramakrishna, who is wanting to ask a question. Dr. Ramakrishna, could you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Dr. Ramakrishna, could you please unmute yourself and ask the question? This does happen in the online. Uh, please kindly click on to this icon which appears on the right hand side of your screen. If you are wanting uh, to ask a question, we have uh, Jutika Nanda Das. Uh, Jutika Nanda Das, please unmute yourself to ask the question. Jutika Nanda Das, could you please unmute yourself to ask the question? I have unmuted you from here. Jyotika Nanda Das, once again requesting you, please unmute yourself if you want to ask a question. No, not able to do that. Quickly, let me go to, uh, we have Kanchan Kumari, who is interested to uh, ask a question. Kanchan Kumari, Kanchan, could you please unmute yourself? Kanchan Kumari, could you please unmute yourself? I believe we have our attendees, you know, having a difficulty. Please. Uh, 
you have to click on to this icon which appears on the right hand side uh, the microphone icon uh, to unmute yourself we have uh, this is for mr chetan matade i cannot give you an audio control since you have connected uh, your audio device is not shown uh, so we, i can't give you you can just can post your question in the chat box and we can take the question from here we have neeraj hura uh, neeraj hura neeraj hura neeraj could you please unmute yourself if you want uh, to ask the question neeraj hura you are connected could you please unmute yourself i believe you know our colleagues today you know they are not able to please uh, you have to click on to this icon which appears on the right hand side uh, the microphone icon appears and uh, we have dr rashmi kumbhar dr rashmi kumbhar yes dr rashmi we are connected good evening sir thank you for the wonderful insights uh, i am rashmi kumbhar from central university of gujarat and uh, while explaining the curricular practices prevalent you talked about the component of internships sir so i would like to know if there are any models uh, regarding uh, the internship which we can look up to any of the western curriculum highly developed countries like the usa or the uk do they have any models for library internships sir? yeah uh, thank you dr rashmi you know internship is really an important issue and uh, right now i'll offhand i'll not be able to offer any particular model or uh, but then uh, speaking to people and uh, talking to people otherwise uh, knowing how they are really implementing and not only in our profession i keep seeing here and there in different professions like management law and medicine and i try to learn from that i believe it has to be continuous internship it has to be while the student is with us it should not be just one internship earlier we used to talk of pre course internship post course internship a mid course internship but now i believe when i see other professions that are where students are really making their mark i find after every some time they have an internship for their student and i believe i personally i feel after every semester it should be there so if a student is there with us during our post graduation for two years i believe it should be four internships and similarly if we introduce at an undergraduate level we should not let our student go off and every time there is some time we should have internship for our students and when we talk of internship it has to be a very structured program where we have a system of you know, uh, the employer uh, the person who is providing internship as well as our learner know what he or she is supposed to do how he or she has to is supposed to go about how we are going to evaluate all these measures have to be very well formulated so that we are able to achieve what we want to achieve out of internship and in case it is not possible to send our students to an employer maybe the scope is not there we should associate our students in some research program so that they learn how to do research they are involved in doing that research because you know nep says research at the level of undergraduate level so this gives them a chance of doing a mini research being associated with a research project or a researcher helping the researcher and learning from the researcher so there has to be a provision for one and all in a very systematic rigorous way of doing it thank you very much sir i think we have home work to do as faculty yeah. members thank you so much for the inputs thank you Dr. Sangeeta, you are muted. You are muted. Okay, I have been muted. You know, thank you. Thanks, thanks for. I kept on saying, and thanks for pointing it out. I thought that no, I have not muted you. You know, so why I am able to hear this? Uh, 
<laughs> Thank you very much. This does happen. I was wanting to ensure that we don't have a kind of an echoing. Uh, so because of that, I muted myself. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Sharma. We have with us Professor Ravi S, the head of the department, Central University of Tamil Nadu. And uh, I request Dr. S. Ravi to kindly ask a question to our distinct speaker. May I request you, Dr. Ravi? Thank you, Dr. Sankita, for having organized the excellent program in a very appropriate time for having showed a lot of interest in life and information science a few days before there was a program on curriculum development now a new education policy and a big namaskar to Professor Dejeev Sharma for a deliberated picture to excellent presentation on new education policy and its implications and applications. I'd like to share some of the past experiences in, as far as the three years course in the library and information science, long back, Bishop Kiban College in Tuchirapalli, they have conducted the program because of uh, some recognition problem. They have given up that. That they have started a five years program. That also there was objection from UPC. This five years program, Calcutta University also started and they have given it up. Annamalai University also started. A lot of objections we received from University grants commission. I, I am sharing the experience of the past, and now we are going to again uh, doing this kind of three years and five years. And what about the recognition of these programs? Uh, it will be accepted in the light of new education policy. Uh, still, we have some kind of stigma on library information science, how we can offer this kind of three years and five years. Uh, please let me enlighten on this. Thank you. Mr. Sharma, please unmute yourself now. Yes. Dr. Sangeeta, can you please? Um, yeah, uh, yeah. It's, yes. it's fine. It's, it's fine. Yes. It's fine. What was the question? Uh, the question from Dr. Ravi is because he says that the past uh, record shows that they had this problem of and they have been ex uh, extending the you know the year of uh, uh, our um, course curriculum period, uh, whether NMLI University and some other. And they said that these problems does uh, they, they had faced it with UGC when they tried to extend you know the period of uh, our uh, library information science courses. So uh, Dr. Ravi is wanting to know how far uh, you know this can go when we are thinking about NEP. So how do to go about you know who is going to uh, make and you know uh, inform UGC means how it's going to really work uh, and how uh, the library and information science departments have to now proceed keeping in view the new NEP. Yeah yeah uh, thank you Dr. Ravi uh, you know uh, we here in the department also were uh, having all these questions in our mind and that is why I started talking to my professional colleagues across different departments and universities. Because when there is a new development coming up and the way things are moving in academics, I think we have to really start afresh and bring in new changes, which are already visible happening in different departments. I read out some of the courses which people are already offering and there is no dearth of different courses that are coming up. In fact, at times we may have to think of what to uh, not provide and what new have to be incorporated. So uh, provisions are there and uh, it's all there. So we need to really do some discussions, sit down all of us, and the departments, associations, we can also talk of conveying our decisions to the regulatory bodies like these days it has to be a new regulator and they say we will involve professional bodies like uh, the professional body we have to think of which professional body because uh, they have given examples of bodies from agriculture from law and other now, because we don't have any such body which is recognized we have to sit down and prepare a plan of action and communicate it so that we get an acceptance. So I think here there is a moment again that has come up and if not providing uh, the level of undergraduation or what, even at the postgraduate level, we have to think of coming out with a standardized way of presenting things that is accepted and identified. So that is, I think we have to really put in our efforts for that. Professor, for having uh, enlightened me on this. Uh, 
because just like that, what happened in the previous set. Right? Several instructions we received from UBC to stop that five years further. And finally, we uh, stopped it like that. So the experience of some other institutions also uh, have the same uh, kind of treatment. Carry on. This is all a new era, new uh, kind of uh, mission. We are going to take it. Hopefully, we do the best. Yeah, thank you. thank you very much, Dr. Ravi. Thank you. Uh, we would now quickly would like to see if we have any uh, other attendee who is interested to ask and make the best use uh, of the availability. We have Dr. Sheetal Tank uh, from Atmeya University, Rajkot. Uh, Dr. Yes. Sheetal, it's a pleasure to get connected. And may I request you uh, to kindly ask your question? Thank you so much, Sangeeta. Uh, namaste, Jaydeep Ji. Uh, thank you so much for a wonderful session today. And as uh, rightly said, it was uh, very timely. So uh, we do not have a de uh, department of library science. I'm, I'm Dr. Sheetal Tan from Atmiya University uh, at Rajkot, Gujarat. And uh, I'm also not looking to mushroom one more school of library science uh, at the Gujarat. <laughs> uh, but yes, uh, I have been invited by my, um, uh, you know, my uh, ad administration team uh, to design courses uh, which are under skill enhancement uh, course, you know, to offer them under skill enhancement course in uh, second year uh, for uh, graduates. Uh, so I have started designing courses like digital asset management rather than just saying digital library where I'm basically going to talk about, um, you know, uh, working with these space kind of uh, uh, things. So if we are trying to see whether this could be made more general and uh, whether they could be offered. So uh, is it OK if we do such type of courses and do we, you know, kind of uh, like right now we have made it as a 40 hour uh, course wherein we would be giving them a total practical uh, hands on uh, training on these space and digital asset management. So uh, what is your view about it? Because I've still not proposed it. The syllabus is ready, but I'm yet to propose it to uh, my administration. So if you could give me some inputs in this regard, that would really help me to you know, go ahead in this way, which would be more integrated you know, uh, with the existing courses that we have. Thank you, Dr. Sheetal. And really, it's wonderful that you are doing it, but uh, you know, you said digital asset management. This is another nomenclature that has come up. So uh, when I was seeing the curricula, I, I think we need to think of some standard limits also and names also of different courses. And I believe that when uh, the courses have to be offered, it has to be faculty offering. And with the help and support of library, library, uh, professionals can also be involved in designing, in offering, in also taking classes. But I believe that when a course is offered, there has to be some faculty that has to offer, a, a discipline, a department to offer. Library is always welcome to be part of it. And if your university feels, yes, the library can offer a course, you should go about it. But then, uh, as you said, it has to be a hands-on course. And I believe that practical library is most appropriate to do it. And you can go about it. But then, uh, this is also something which has to be kept in mind. And uh, when you talk of a skill enhancement course, it, it can be a uh, four-credit course or uh, it can be a two credit course or uh, yeah it has to be a four credit course uh, you can make it uh, but then you are going to have it only hands-on so that also is an issue because generally it has to be theory as well as some practical and if it is totally practical then maybe you have a little bit of theory maybe one credit of theory three credit of practice and please see around how things are happening around you Try to make it uniform so that when you talk of uh, students moving from here and there, they should not have any problems. That is an issue which we have to keep in mind. Sure, sir. Thank you so much for that input, and I'll definitely work towards it. Thank you, Sangeeta. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Sheetal. Thank you so much. In fact, Professor.
uh, Shabha, this question from uh, Dr. Sheetal Tank has also generated, I means yet another dimension of it that we're in the libraries, how this interlinking between the libraries and library departments, because uh, the expertise are there in the departments. Libraries can be the places where in, in actual, they can, you know, the practical things can happen there in the libraries in the real uh, time environments. But yes, there is a greater need yet again. So this can yet be yet another kind of discussions uh, can uh, uh, be uh, held that how uh, for this fulfillment of the objectives of NEP, how libraries and library departments can become as an integrated unit uh, in order to uh, you know create the kind of a manpower which is required. So thank you very much, Dr. Sheetal, for asking this very pertinent question. And I think this has definitely given us a lot much of uh, room for further discussions. We have Shazia Bashir who is wanting to ask a question. Uh, Ms. Shazia Bashir, I have unmuted you with a request. Please unmute yourself and quickly ask the question. Because as I could see, you know, we are already, we have crossed now four o'clock. We are at 4.3 right now. And we have Professor Sharma has another meeting schedule at 4.30. So we just want to ensure that we give him a little time, some breathing space to have a little quick cup of tea on this cold uh, afternoon here in Delhi before he uh, heads for yet another online meeting. Shazia Bashir, could you please quickly unmute yourself, Shaz Shazia? I believe Shaze is not able to do that. You can post your question quickly or we will get you connected uh, with Professor Sharma and you can uh, further can do. We have, uh, once again, uh, Dr. Sriram uh, has raised the hand and I just want to, yes, Dr. Sriram, uh, uh, I've unmuted you, please go ahead. Okay, okay. thank you, ma'am. So I had uh, added another question in the, my first one. So uh, the same question I wanted to repeat, uh, uh, where do you see uh, the library science education at par with the international uh, um, degrees, because I know I personally felt this problem when I was uh, in my early career. I was looking something which can I I can pursue from other places. So uh, there was a very clear uh, message I got is okay, the degree which you are uh, having is not um, uh, recognized by the uh, university. So uh, what what is your opinion uh, or otherwise how we can uh, make our LIS curriculum at par with other international universities. You're inspiring everyone, Dr. Sharamia. Yes, yeah. A very thoughtful question and very pertinent question. When you talk of movement globally from one country to another country, we are talking of movement in the country and we are making the reforms so that our students are accepted internationally. And they will be accepted internationally if they are prepared from an international point of view. And you know, when you talk of preparing our learners, our students uh, with international acceptability, there are two things that have to be kept in mind. One is the contents of the courses and also the way the contents are delivered. So when we are talking of contents, I don't think any one of us who prepares curriculum for the department, because you remember the last departmental, uh, the UGC curriculum development committee gave the curriculum in 2000 which was no less, it was a very good quality curriculum that was given internationally acceptable also. But after that, there has been no such committee except for LOCL, which has given uh, not only a curriculum which is indicative, but also uh, the curriculum framework that has been given and techniques also. So now if we talk of contents, I don't think that when we prepare our contents, we are less than any other international university or university of other countries, but how we really uh, are able to uh, inculcate or provide that knowledge, skills and attitudes to our students is very important. And I think as uh, faculty members, we really need to learn that. And I was also mentioning not only NEP and my own personal views also, that continuous professional development is very important. We as teachers need to really improve ourselves, learn so that we are able to prepare our future learners also that way and prepare them at par with international standards. You know, though no two countries are similar, there has to be some differences and but then there has to be a level where we take our students. It's not alone in library and fusion science. You talk of any other discipline. When you talk of compatibility, it, compatibility, compatibility doesn't mean that we, we are all equal, but then we are able to move from one uh, environment to the other environment. So while preparing, now, now we are doing it all afresh. We are 
trying to improve ourselves, we have to keep in mind, yes, our student should be so well prepared that he is able to adopt and adapt in a different environment, in different countries. So for that, we have to make all these changes and we are no less, the, uh, but then I believe that adding contents here and there, and we have to keep in mind whether we are able to deliver that also or not, whether our, our students will be able to receive that or not. So that for that, that environment has to be created, how we have to uh, really see that, yes, they are prepared for what we are preparing them for. That is very important. Thank you very much, Professor Sharma, for uh, really making the things much clearer. And yes, again, there's a lot much to do and also requesting uh, Dr. Shriram that we have to see that it's not only we inspire international uh, librarianship, and engage in that, but we also have to see that our own manpower for our own country, we have to create them. It's not that we train them and then they go out, but we have to ha create a manpower who serves, you know, for our own uh, country. And uh, and yes, uh, the days are very bright and uh, we can, uh, we, we are able to see from Pr Professor Sharma that how the departments are already have started uh, uh, realigning their courses. So we can really can look forward and all of us have to contribute in the best to our capacity you know for this uh, you know uh, initiatives we have uh, mr shrikant kumar yes yes Dr. Shiram, yeah. I just remember that we can also have tie-ups with international departments so that we can have a movement from one department to the other. So that when we do that, we share our own plans and see how where we stand so that we can improve upon that and see that, yes, there is an exchange of students across departments, across countries also. That is another view that we have to really think about. Yeah, Professor Shama, uh, uh, Dr. Shama, this has reminded me, you know, I have seen uh, this uh, Indiana University in Indiana, Indianapolis, you know, in US, and they have one of the best uh, departments uh, who are also, what NEP is now doing it, that it has to be a multidisciplinary approach. They're already doing it in the Department of Library and Information Science. Wherein for the first year, uh, you know, you may have a core, uh, you know, subject that you take it, maybe a humanities, maybe a science. And then on further of that, they have specific library science uh, you know uh, the uh, program schedule has been made in such a way that they create the librarians they create the manpower in that particular disciplines then and i think that we need to take some of those you know in our own and when we talk about nep this is definitely going to happen but there are some best examples and yes definitely through international collaborations that would also inspire and make the things uh, to happen the way that we really want it so thank you very much once again and we'll just take one or two questions more uh, uh, and this is to request Mr. Shrikant Kumar Harish, and then you, are, you have raised your digital hand. Quickly um, uh, unmute yourself if you are interested to ask a question. Uh, Shrikant Kumar Harish, and then if not, uh, let me just mute you and we will just go to our uh, yet another attendee, uh, Sudhakar Sharma, who is interested to ask a question. Uh, Mr. Sudhakar Sharma, could you please unmute yourself and ask the question? We are running short of time now, uh, so I have to quick, very quickly, we have to uh, wind up now the session. Uh, Mr. Sudhakar Sharma, you have raised your hand. Uh, you're not able to get connected. Uh, let me just quickly going through. Uh, we have Mr. Suresh N. Uh, Mr. Suresh N, could you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Mr. Suresh N, could you please unmute yourself and ask the question? Mr. Suresh is not able to do that. Uh, please excuse and we are a little faster now because uh, we have to uh, ensure uh, that uh, our distinguished speaker gets some time uh, before he gets into the next meeting. Uh, just quickly going through it from A to Z alphabetically, I have crossed A and getting into the B, Balakrishna Dube. Quickly, Mr. Balakrishna Dube. Mr. Balakrishnan Dube, uh, could you please unmute yourself if you want to ask the question? Not able to do it. I'm sorry, I can't really uh, in a position to wait for more time. Uh, I've crossed now D. This is an alphabetical listing. Uh, we have doc, uh, Dr. Deepa Kumar Shirivasta. Dr. Deepa Kumar Shirivasta, quickly. If you have a question, you have raised your digital hand. Uh, you want to ask something, you may please kindly unmute yourself. Dr. Deepak Kumar Shirivasta, uh, I'm so sorry, I have to mute you now because you have not been able to do that. Uh, 
moving very very quickly now we uh, we have uh, dr pradeep das uh, this yet another attempt uh, i have unmuted you you are unmuted please ask your question dr pradeep das dr pradeep das please uh, i believe you are not able to get even in the last webinars also it has been happening you need to check uh, for your audio connectivity in your device whether it's a mobile or it's your laptop or a desktop mr guru raj uh, sola uh, solab neshwar mr guru raj uh, solab neshwar could you please unmute yourself not able to do it we have a move across now from g to k we have crossed and quickly doing that we have kumar jayprakash kumar jayprakash please unmute yourself very very quickly if you want to ask a question mr kumar jayprakash could you please unmute yourself no you are not able to do it so i have to now mute you from here uh, because you are not able to do that we have mr manoharan m Mr. Manoharan M, could you please unmute yourself quickly? Please do that, Mr. Manoharan M. You have raised your digital hand. You want to ask a question? Please unmute yourself. I'm extremely sorry, Mr. Manoharan. I have to move to the next because we are really running short of time now, and uh, it seems uh, that uh, I have crossed now R and inching towards. Uh, the entire list of our uh, we have mr sanjay kumar dr sanjay kumar kern from ranchi university dr sanjay kumar kern could you please and yes we are connected dr sanjay uh, namaskar ma'am and namaskar sir namaskar. after a long time i am seeing uh, our jaydeep sir uh, thank you very much for this wonderful presentation sir my question is that how our new education policy is it going to give us the map for the development of public libraries in india and regarding the development of public libraries in india how this new education policy is going to play the role thank you uh, see dr sanjay there is already a mention of the role of public library they have already mentioned that they have stressed the importance and they have given us a direction also now we have to work on it and we have to work and start doing it i think uh, it is they have already indicated it they have shown yes it is important they have shown where it is required and we need to really prepare for that work on it and do it now thank you very much i would just like to also mention uh, to dr sanjay kumar kern that even the recommendation says the uh, uh, national education policy says that the academic institution should come forward in letting their spaces to be used for the public uh, uh, for the public uh, uh, you know general public and they should you know create and there have been some very best examples you know in our last presentation a uh, few days ago uh, we have been shown that uh, how some of the academic libraries are now coming forward in doing that so there is a greater need again Uh, and even there has been a uh, now a need coming in that even the schools being used for that you know the schools wherein you know you have the classes till two o'clock and then after school hours the buildings can be used uh, as public libraries wherein the public can come and can they can utilize it. So with this we are towards the closure of the session and uh, we would really like to convey our sincere thanks to Professor Sharma for being there. You have really generated a lot much of curiosity and it has truly been. and enlightening the uh, session by you and uh, you really really have been able to create what we have been really wanting creating more awareness creating uh, more uh, interactions and also opening up you know the minds of each one of us that what there's lot much you know that we have to do there has been a very ambitious path being set you know by the government to ensure that we are able to move and we are pretty confident that uh, with the availability of uh, our esteemed colleagues like you around and especially those who are heading you know the most premier institutions in the country in whether we talk about the library and information science education we talk about the libraries we all have to the message is clear and loud that we have to all work collaboratively we have to work collectively 
because our mission and our goal remains the same and that is you know the service service and service and you have pointed it out also it's being there in the policy document too that yes we have to see to it that we are able to inculcate the right values the right attitudes and that uh, the entire uh, you know the ethos of uh, you know providing the service uh, so uh, uh, professor sharma would you like to say something you know you have uh, really being able to do a marvelous uh, you know work of being there with us and spreading this uh, wonderful message of how we can really can bring in reforms that we always uh, want to see around so would you like to say something thank you dr sangeeta my sincere thanks to delnet to you in particular that you gave me a chance to interact i was really wanting to interact with my fellow professionals because i am really in doubt what to do how to do and i think many of us would be in doubt i think this is the right time this is not the only discussion we should have many such discussions many more focused discussions across the country and come out on a consensus come out on a way where we are able to show yes flexibly we can do it across the country for everyone in the country we have to show equity and for one for all it has to be there i think there to end the year we have really done a good job i think we of initiating the discussion i don't believe this is the only discussion we might have had many other discussions let us continue with these and come out with some new ground so that we are able to work again and with all the confusions that we are having let us clear them and keep continuing with that wish you all a very happy new year and i end up here i am really thankful to you all for having given time to making me learn also thank you yeah thank you very much professor sharma we too um, each one of us wishes you too the happy and blessed times ahead and we really look forward to having you back again in the new year thank you so very much for being there with us thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah thank you thank you so much thank you Thank you. We are also much uh, grateful to uh, each one of you, our uh, dear colleagues, you know, who have been able to really make the session more interactive with your very, very important, relevant questions that you have been able to raise. As I said earlier, this is the last webinar that we have just conducted, you know, of the year 2021, and we would just like to quickly have a very quick feedback from each one of you about the webinars being conducted by Delnet. And for this, I would just like to request you. You, we are posting some poll questions, not many. Uh, there are hardly four or five questions which are there. And we really request you to please kindly give us uh, your candid feedback about it. How would you like to rate the webinars being conducted by Delnet uh, uh, you know, in, the, in the year 2021? As I said, this is the 75th webinar being organized by Delnet during the year from 1st January 21. And uh, that uh, has been, uh, we just want to know that how would you uh, you know how have you found find you know these webinars so thank you very much for this my next question you know is coming and getting flashed on the screen please indicate whether you have found these delnet webinars useful for your professional development and this is also as being discussed by a distinguished speaker the continuing uh, professional development uh, the cpd uh, that we need to do delnet is also working now very closely to see how can we can we think about having some digital uh, refresher courses programs on uh, specific topics we are working now very very closely on that so we just want to ask you that do you feel that attending these webinar programs uh, that has been a fulfilling experience for you and you have really found that yes yeah you have been able to get a lot much uh, you know for your professional development we'll be very very happy to get your feedback 41 percent of you have voted as of now really request you because we really are keen enough that at least 50 percent of our attendees uh, do come forward and giving us uh, your input so we would truly always we value your suggestions your advice and we would really be wanting it has come now to 47 percent three percent more please come forward and give us this candid uh, feedback uh, that have you found these uh, uh, webinars which 
are being conducted uh, by Telnet over the year of uh, immense uh, of some professional uh, you know uh, use. So 50% of you have voted. Thank you very much for this. My next question comes. Please inform us how did you find the invited speakers of these webinars? And this is we are talking about. You can just can recollect. It's also uh, recollecting what all webinars during the year. So as we say uh, send off to the year 2021, we also have to see what all we have done, what all we have uh, attended, what kind of programs we have. So just you can just can go down the memory lanes and let us know how did you find you know our invited speakers. Uh, we just request you to be very very. Uh, frank with us give us your very candid feedback about it and we will truly always value uh, your uh, inputs to us and that always gives us a lot much of ground to further improve uh, the way that we are conducting the, our own sales so i request you 47 percent of you have voted as of now please come forward uh, it has become now 48 percent uh, Please help us in crossing uh, at least the 50% threshold that we should have at least a 50% of our attendees to let us know how they have really felt uh, uh, attending these. So thank you very much. Here in comes uh, the second last question, and that is kindly inform us about the quality of the video audio transmission of these online programs. As we could, uh, we, we do fully understand that, that from entire country and even from outside, that's the best part that we are finding it that yes, we have our professional colleagues from across the country, nooks and parts of the country uh, who are able to join us, not even from India and from outside. And that's the magic of being in the online mode. Uh, and so we just really want to also hear from you about the quality of the reception of the audio and the video that's being, we know for sure ourselves also we do have, there are constraints throughout the country in the bandwidth and uh, it does happen, you know, at uh, times. And, but we really want to see that uh, how many of you how have you been able to uh, find this so thank you uh, very very much it's like it's a 49 percent uh, one person more to go before we really uh, we are having a very high bandwidth that we use it over here but at the same time we it's also important that those who are uh, attending to it you also need to have fairly a good uh, connections you know in, in place so uh, the platform is there it's a state-of-the-art platform it just uh, it does the adjustments according to the bandwidth it encounters, but still we just want to get a real feel. Kindly rate the ease of use of the GoToWebinar platform. This is a very, very crucial thing for us because uh, Please kindly, the ease of use. It's quite easy to use a go to webinar platform and we send you a link and then you get connected with it. So please let us know is it quite easy to use? Do you find it difficult to use or do you see that it requires a good technical know how? It's only for the first timers. This does happen uh, in no ways. I don't want to uh, make your replies more biased by saying that, but I just want to say that yes, the first time when you get connected, you need to learn, you know, because every platform has its own do's and don'ts and the specific ways of doing the things so but we really really are keen enough uh, you know to uh, get your inputs for this and quickly for five minutes five or seven minutes we just want to have because 4 30 is the time that we all have requested you to have uh, uh, with delnet today so we just wanted to quickly ask you uh, it has reached to 48 percent quickly give us uh, two percent more of you have to come forward it has uh, now reached to 49% and 50%. So thank you very much for this. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, the responses have truly been quite encouraging for us. Now we would quickly would like to, though you are going to also get this question once you sign out today, you are also going to get this question because we are, as we are towards the closure of 2021 and getting into the 2022 with great high hopes and of doing something new, bringing in, uh, you know, the new kind of things, you know, in to the new year, the fresh new uh, beginnings that all of us are making, we would like to know from our own professional colleagues, from each one of you, what are the new, the areas that you feel Delnet should uh, think about conducting? Whether we talk about having an international speakers or we talk about having conferences or we talk about having our own uh, speakers from the country, what are the important subjects, the topics concerning we, the library and information science professionals that you feel that we should try 
to have uh, our uh, webinars or online programs so i would request you uh, if maybe we can just can get connected on the audio because we would just like to hear you also and we also want to note down that who has uh, really wanting us to work on that so please kindly the floor is open if you just want to give us any suggestions about any topics any specific subjects on which you want that delnet should concentrate and then it should organize the webinars or any online programs in the coming uh, new year of 2022 please kindly raise your digital hand and we would be very very interested uh, to hear from you please let us know we have anita kumari uh, who may like to say something anita kumari anita i have unmuted you requesting you unmute yourself and uh, let us know anita kumari anita could you please unmute yourself Anita Kumari, Anita, could you please unmute yourself? Anita is having, it seems, a difficulty because her audio connection is uh, no longer, it, it, uh, it was visible for a while. And then uh, uh, you can also can post it in the chat box. You can, and I, I'd be very happy to read it uh, on the chat box. So on the chat box, you can write it. Trying to get connected with Dr. Deepak Kumar Shirvastav. Dr. Deepak Kumar Shirvastav, uh, I have sent you an unmute request. Quickly, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, give us your uh, inputs. Dr. Deepak Kumar Shirvastav, uh, no, it seems that Deepak is not able to do that. Uh, let me just go. Uh, you can even can post your replies in the chat box and we would be very happy uh, to collate all the inputs and then to work on them besides uh, uh, you know, having, uh, you can even can write to us. And as I said earlier, uh, that you, uh, you are also going to get this as a question once you sign off today. Uh, I would just like to, I can see that there are, uh, we have Ranjita Kulkarni, who, uh, uh, sorry, it's Ranjita Karnani who may like to say something. Ranjita Karnani, I believe Ranjita is uh, from, uh, yes, Ranjita. Uh, yeah, uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah, Hi. hello, ma'am. Ma'am, actually, uh, I always like your webinars and the topics you selected, but I would like to uh, uh, say that if you add more workshops and trainings in the coming year, that will be very helpful for us to learn more about uh, uh, about these topics. Ranjita, thank you very much. Uh, I would just like to say, uh, running the training programs means a continuous training programs, if you think about, or uh, doing it a uh, workshops. Uh, definitely, it has to be more focused and all. Uh, but yes, in the online environment, it has got its own constraints at the same time. Uh, because there are a couple of workshops on which you really want a hands-on to be there and how really to achieve that. Uh, and also, moreover, I think all of us would agree with the fact that once you do it in an online, uh, to retain your attention for a long time, it's always a very challenging thing. Because if we say for an entire uh, day, we are running a workshop, and then you really want also to see that how much are you able to do it yourself, because it's not in hands-on, we cannot do it in the... so. Uh, but we do have plans to do certain kind of exclusive workshops. There may not be many because we are fully uh, do understand the kind of issues which comes because it's not just simply uh, conveying from one side. You also want to see it in the real time that what's happening at your end. When we typically talk about a workshop, uh, 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 doing a workshop. But yes, we are on to it. Within we do have plans to do some exclusive programs, uh, you know, focusing on particular subjects which are more uh, practical oriented subjects so we would be very very happy to do that and we do have plans to do it in the coming year we have dr ravi s uh, and i would really be keen enough to get uh, dr ravi's inputs yeah dr ravi uh, may i request you to please give us your uh, uh, expert uh, views on this thank you dr sangeeta for giving me this opportunity uh, one area which come to my mind is Symbiosis between the library and the library science department. Because uh, both are going in a, uh, though they are parallel, but uh, there is no symbiosis, or, uh, practically speaking. Uh, even in our discussion also, it came up. Uh, that is one thing. Another one, uh, during the panel discussion, we have discussed about internationalizationship. That would give some 
very much dr ravi and you have indeed given us some very important you know aspects on which uh, we definitely would like to work on and we are definitely one of the thing which we even had on 21st of december when we had uh, the program celebrating uh, the library networking day they had been discussions in the panel discussion and uh, we are uh, then it would be very happy to see can we uh, really help our departments and also the libraries at the same time uh, for uh, doing this networking work between the libraries and the departments by offering this internship programs for the students where in delnet would definitely be um, in collaboration with the departments in collaboration with our own member institutions in the states across the country we can definitely would be very happy regarding international uh, librarianship definitely this is uh, one of our uh, major area because it's not from the country but even from outside and since uh, delnet is all been committed uh, for connections and collaborations so we are on to it in order to see that we have some international collaborations also happening not only just simply having a talk or a lecture but as a long standing commitment uh, between the organizations uh, so that uh, you know the empowering the libraries and empowering our own library and information science professionals remains our priority so we are working on it and we are pretty confident that this new uh, 2022 would bring in a kind of some new uh, things also that we intend to offer to, uh, to our allies fraternity in the country and we are pretty confident with a very kind cooperation and support from each one of you uh, we collectively would be able to achieve uh, a lot much uh, in the coming new year uh, just quickly would be uh, moving uh, across our attendees list to see if we have any question uh, we have uh, vidya nivas mishra who may like to say something vidya nivas mishra uh, could you please unmute yourself vidya nivas mishra could you please unmute yourself i have unmuted you from this side vidya nivas mishra could you please unmute yourself no, Vidya is not able to do that. I would like to go now to Mr. Vijay Kumar Verma, if I'm not wrong, from IIT Delhi. Uh, okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Uh, good afternoon, ma'am, and thanks for giving the opportunity. I attended some of your webinar. It was really nice, and I learned a lot from all whatever the webinar I have attended, ma'am. So just I wanted to ask you, do you create the archive of the webinars also so that we can have the recording? And if we want to know, the previous one then we can come to know about that yeah 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 uh, which uh, we do have the archives uh, of all these webinars and this is to inform to uh, all of our attendees also uh, that we do have the archives of these uh, webinars that has been conducted by delnet ever since 10th of august 2020 that was the day when our very first webinar was organized and we now are uh, as uh, Maybe some of you would definitely be knowing about it that Delnet will soon be launching our portal of Vision Portal, that is video sites online, uh, which contains the video tutorials by the expert speakers uh, from the faculty members uh, across the country, even from outside India not only of our member institutions, but also from other institutions in varied disciplines, in varied fields of knowledge. And we are now uh, going to make that portal open very soon. That is one of our priority areas on which we are currently working in. And wherein even these entire uh, archives of each and every, wherein metadata is being created, is a, a very in-depth um, uh, uh, profiling that we have done for each and every video lecture. And we intend to also bring in, in that portal 
to uh, at the host institution name you can see delnet and then you would be able to see or even if you see just simply you say library and you will be able to see and get all those hits and even with the individual um, titles of those uh, programs those online webinars or lectures or anything so yes uh, Vijay, we are in the process of doing that and we are planning to uh, have it available even for our member institutions wherein they would be able to right now we have requested them to send us across uh, those lectures and links and then we are updating but now we are also planning to make it available giving the login and password to our individual institutions wherein they can upload they will create a metadata and upload the video lectures but yes we are definitely going to again view it and see it whether it is as per the requirements and then we will push that into our IAR and that will be ma making it available so yes we have uh, and uh, this is um, also to tell each one of you till the time that happens though we are planning that it should we should be able to achieve it in uh, uh, 2021 22 um, uh, uh, financial year that is by 31st of march we should make it available to our users but at any point of time you want to view any of the video recordings you are most welcome to write to us and these are all being made available we can just can send you a link and that would be a link of go to webinar but yes we do have plans even to have we now have our the youtube channel for delnet but we need to have the permissions from each and every speaker when we are trying to broadcast it through some of the others but on the go to webinar all these on which delnet holds the right you know and uh, you're most welcome to write to us and we'll be very very happy to share i just want to quickly i would like to thank uh, you know some of our colleagues the pankar bohra uh, we have vijay kumar verma which has just been interacting dr sudhir kumar jena who said building smart library services some of the near things uh, that we should try about uh, doing that and um, also for the rural libraries public libraries yes indeed uh, on digital archiving is yet another one uh, we do have some of the focus areas on which we would like to uh, do the things and I can assure you that we are on to it. Uh, we are uh, on to it and the support of each one of you, we are pretty confident that we would be able to uh, uh, do many things in the coming new year. It seems that we are towards the closure of uh, the last webinar of 2021 on behalf of Delnet, I would like to convey and this is for uh, you know for the entire uh, uh, year you know your association uh, your uh, uh, presence in these online webinars and it's not just simply the presence but uh, your active uh, part in the deliberations have really been valued a lot uh, we are uh, you know uh, pretty confident that in the days to come uh, uh, as a uh, uh, you know, this uh, library uh, networking community is going to grow by uh, leaps and bounds and each one of you are going to significantly play a role. So please kindly do keep on informing us. Tell us, you know, what do you feel uh, how we should really make these online programs more productive in nature, more uh, fulfilling for you and also try to uh, ensure that if you get an invite copy, uh, you know, from Delnet, please feel free enough and sending it across to uh, many more professional colleagues in your own circles, in your own institutions, in other institutions, in your own state and region, because the ultimate aim, you know, we have our today's speaker, distinguished speaker, Professor Sharma, who has uh, dwelt uh, in such a uh, great detail uh, about this uh, national education policy, even the aim of that, why we are wanting to bring in, you know, a, a kind of a, a new thought into this, because it's lot much change which is required really the way that we have been doing it but yes one thing is for sure that we have to be always remain in a collaborative manner we have to really ensure it's not just simply that uh, we are thinking about bringing our collections closer bringing our users closer but we have to see that all of us work closer work together and uh, uh, and get benefited so it, it's everyone it's a win-win situation for everyone whosoever gets connected you know with this beautiful world of networking uh, we remain ever grateful to you for the splendid support uh, that we have been receiving for from our distinguished expert speakers so I take this opportunity to thank each one of them who have really been associated with Delnet during the year uh, 2021 uh, in being uh, their presence and uh, their intellectual 
virtual uh, sharing of their own knowledge uh, on this platform of the Delnet webinar platform has really greatly been admired uh, uh, by Delnet and also by the entire LIS fraternity. Uh, we remain ever grateful to you for your support and uh, we really look forward to the same in the year 2022. So uh, on this, uh, we would be uh, would like to now close. And on behalf of Delnet uh, and uh, the entire uh, our governing board and RSC members, we would like to wish you, your colleagues, your friends, uh, your family members, all near and dear ones, a truly happy, blessed, and uh, a well uh, uh, memorable uh, 2022. Uh, wishing you the best of the times ahead, and uh, also requesting each one of you that please do kindly uh, 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 keep on having your trust and faith that you have uh, always been extending to Delnet because that's a most in inspirational, most motivating for us. And you really always inspire us to keep on moving. So with this, we are towards a closure of the last webinar, which is being held by Delnet in 2021. Wishing you all a very, very happy and blessed new year. May the divine grace of the Almighty always shine bright on each one of you, your family, your friends, your near and dear ones, colleagues, and everyone. And may we bring in you know, not much of uh, brightness into the lives of others by continuing our work of spreading information and knowledge. Thank you very much. God bless you, each one of you. I would like to convey my sincere thanks to my colleagues here at Delnet, especially Mr. Kushal Giri Goswami and Mrs. Ranjana, who has immensely been contributing a lot in the smooth conduct of these webinars. God bless you, each one of you. We really look forward to welcoming 2022 with the presence of each one of you uh, with our new webinar uh, programs that we would be starting off in the 2022. Till then, God bless you all. Wishing you once again a very happy new year and thank you for being such an integral and memorable part of 2021 with Delnet. Thank you very much. God bless each one of you. Thank you so much. Thank you indeed.